Because if there was a physical threat in front of me and I put up my dukes, like I would be putting up my dukes. Like I don't feel safe right now. I've put up my dukes. Um, whereas what I'm hearing you say is if I have gotten into black and white thinking, then that's essentially I've put up my dukes mm. by black and white thinking. Right? When and if resistance shows up, it's really important not to pathologize it, to give it a pejorative lens as it were. It's There's nothing wrong with having your resistances or defenses come up. I mean, all resistances and defenses are, um, they're, they're trying to protect you at some level, always. That's what I believe about any psychological defense or resistance. We so. go with resistance and we honor it and be compassionately curious about it. And so to that end, right, you're very right and very accurate that resistance can take a lot of different forms and perhaps guilt might come up. Guilt might come up even in questioning, you know, do I need to remother? I mean, my mom did the best she could, et cetera, right? And I think part of what is so um, challenging about guilt and this remothering work is that um, we're, we're forced to move from either or thinking to both and thinking. A little psychoeducation, guilt is an emotion that says I've done something bad. Shame is an emotion that says I am bad, but guilt says my action is bad. And it can really um, show up when we start to look a little bit more uh, level-headedly at the, the parenting that we did or did not receive with more clear eyes and with more sort of critique. Because it's very hard for a lot of us to hold both, you know, my mom or my caregiver did the best they could and I was lacking in these ways. We're moving from a very bifurcated lens of my mom is all good or all bad to both and. She did well in some ways and there were gaps in other ways, right? And so if somebody is experiencing guilt for taking a look at the remothering they did or did not receive, I would say, A, again, back to the education piece, there's nothing bad or wrong about taking a look at the parenting you received. You're truly, it's not wrong, but it can feel uncomfortable. And yeah. it's very important to recognize that no part of life is black or white it, or is either or, it's always both and, including the parenting we did or didn't receive. I'm saying this as much as somebody who received parenting, um, but who is a parent herself. And um, just to, to the point of what you said, I do my, my best most of the time. And I know that some of my unprocessed history leaks out and I get dysregulated or I flip my lid as Dan Siegel would say, um, we're doing the best we can. So it's not either or, it's both and. And so I would say that that's important to hold in mind when guilt shows up. Yeah, there's a couple of things I'm pulling from what you just said. Um, well, two, two really. One is that, but it can feel uncomfortable. Like I, I just, mm. it's just an acceptance that it can feel uncomfortable. And almost based on what you said, it would be almost like, hooray, I feel uncomfortable. That must mean that I'm about to be uh -huh. learning something new is what that's I'm hearing you say. Point. That's a really great point, Simona. I, I don't think that growth comes from staying comfortable. Now I want to contextualize that and nuance it a bit more. I think there's a difference between um, an appropriate amount of discomfort versus re-traumatizing ourselves by looking at something too fast or having a non-trauma informed therapist take you directly back to a trauma memory. So I think there's an appropriate amount of feeling discomfort that indicates growth. And that's important to bear in mind too. All right. Well, that seems important for the foundational week. And the other thing that you said that really struck me was that black and white, and that also mm -hmm. a sign, like if we're noticing we're feeling one or the other, that mm -hmm. none of that might be the time for a breath or a pause or a, oh, there's probably a third thing that I'm not seeing here is, is what I'm hearing you say. Am black I and white right? thinking, absolutely. And black and white thinking in and of itself is actually a form of psychological defense. It's a way that it's a very sort of younger um, thinking and feeling state where mom is all good, mom is all bad. Anyone who has a toddler and you take away the iPad <laughs> knows, knows how that comes out. Mom is all bad, whereas before she was all good. And it's a really kind of young mental state to exist in, totally developmentally appropriate for kids. But as we age and grow up, um, hopefully we get to a place of integration where we can hold, you know, both mom is good sometimes and mom is bad sometimes, right? So anytime we notice we've moved to black and white thinking, it's an opportunity to be mindful that maybe a younger mind mindset is showing up and we can practice from our adult self, from our adult place of helping integrate mm. our thinking a little bit more. It's not that mom was all bad. It's not that she's all good. It's a mixture. It's in between. It's both and. There's two things you just said that I want to, that I want to pull forward. One is that moment that is the, re in my definition of it, the remothering moment. 
Yep. So I, um, what I'm hearing you say is like, when, we there, when we're there, we know we're not feeling psychologically safe. And that can be that moment where we turn to ourselves as our own wise mother and say, I've got you. Like, yeah. I, I'm noticing that you're not feeling safe right now, self, because you're in black and white thinking that is totally normal. And um, I'm here with you. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, that's a beautiful intervention. The other thing I'm hearing you say, and I want to make sure I'm getting this right about psychological defense, mm -hmm. is if there was a physical threat in front of me and I put up my dukes, like I would be putting up my dukes, like I don't feel safe right now, I've put up my dukes. Um, whereas what I'm hearing you say is if I have gotten into black and white thinking, then that's essentially I've put up my dukes mm -hmm. by black and white thinking. Am I getting that right? Yeah, you know, the way I like to think about psychological defenses, they're the kind of sort of um, mental armoring, mental and emotional armoring we do to guard against very vulnerable and potentially hard to tolerate feeling states. So it is like proverbially putting up your dukes. It's the armoring you um, accumulate to help uh, tolerate um, or rather protect against those very hard to tolerate feelings. Over time, we can work on those defenses a little bit more, help you expand your capacity to feel the intolerable feeling states. But um, we all come by our psychological defenses very honestly, I think.